गाइस आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल ऑल राइट आई एम इन सेकेंड ईयर राइट नाउ एंड प्रोबेबली यू विल गेट दिस वीडियो इन फ्यूचर बिकॉज आई एम मेकिंग दिस वाइल आई एम हैविंग माई प्रोफेशनल एग्जामिनेशन एंड इट्स माइक्रोबायोलॉजी टूडेज टॉपिक इज माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एज द थर्मनल हैज ऑलरेडी सजेस्टेड सो माइक्रोबायोलॉजी इज अ कम्बाइंड सब्जेक्ट विथ पैथोलॉजी एंड माइक्रोबायोलॉजी कंसिस्ट ऑफ थियोरी एंड प्रैक्टिकल exam so the theory consists of 35 marks and the practical it consists of almost 65 marks i am going to focus on the practical part which is the most important one because you know in practical there are a lot of things and i think making this video will help you guys so that you can just get an overview of what basically it is since it's very hectic and it's very time consuming and you have to know a lot of things and second year has a lot of stress because of all the heavy subjects we have and for that reason the practicals also have a huge amount of pressure in it not very clear about the exact marks uh, distribution i'm just going through as per my knowledge like i think this is how the marks has been distributed mostly as per as i remember all right so coming to the marks distribution so we know that the grand viva is of 20 marks but in this case since it's a combined paper we have 10 marks for the grand viva you don't need to be very happy because the grand viva is not the only viva, viva you have to give it's like when you are going to do okay let's just begin and then i will be discussing about it more so the first thing is uh, you have to go and check out all the slides and there will be instruments which we call as spotters so there will be a slide next to the microscope and you have to identify the bacteria and then you have to move on and then identify the spotters there are a lot of spotters and uh, in youtube we will get a lot of videos on the basis of how to identify a spotter the id points and everything so after doing that there is a file also you have to make and you have to draw there all the bacteria and instruments everything and it uh, in all together it is of 10 marks so here you get another 10 marks which is 20 marks now and then i think you have to go and you have to do all the practical experiments so there are three practicals we did that was zeren staining then we had to do the staining of the pus and then we have to do the staining of the unknown culture media now this carries the excess amount of marks so the unknown culture media can be uh, e coli pseudomonas bacillus or stats so there is nutrient agar and there is a mekonkey agar right so you will understand it if you are not in second year right now or you are just going to be a second year student uh, and you are just watching this you will get to know about all this uh, nutrient medium and uh, these are all the culture medium you have to identify and then you have to uh, do all the stainings the zeren staining and then you have to do the gram stainings and you have to identify whether it's gram positive or gram negative and also there is a paper where you have to write about the experiments and there is motility test that you have to do so this whole thing all together is of 30 marks so we have 50 marks here so the zeren staining and staining of the pus is of 10 plus 10 that means 20 marks and the 20 marks is for identifying the unknown culture media which consists of 20 marks where you have to do the motility test as well where you have to identify whether the bacteria is motile or not it's not that difficult if you know about the bacteria right it's e coli it's obviously like motile so <laughs> you know that and uh, there is a motility test also that is a practical thing where you have to do like the slide preparation and it's a test so it's again a practical thing and but you will know right like you will be able to answer it on the paper that is motile that's enough but you have to perform and the horrible thing is you have to focus the microscope so if you have been through first year you know that in physiology we have the wbc things and you have to just focus on it like 100x they said us to do with the cedar root oil but i don't think in first year it was so important for us like if we can answer in the viva and if and if we can just do the practical in a like in a good way because there are not only one practical we have to do like two three practicals together it's enough but in second year you have to have to focus the slide like you have to focus the bacteria to 100x and until and unless you are able to do that you are not allowed to leave the classroom and go for the pathology exam it's serious guys it's serious 
This is a biochemical rack and this tests are only for E. coli and uh, there are the various colors that are present here and you have to just remember the colors and the test. So E. coli is indole positive and it is the brown shade present over there and it has a red colored ring which is not visible in this photograph but the red ring represents the indole test. The yellow one is urease negative test. It has to be turned to pink if it has to be positive, which is positive for Klebsiella. So remember that Klebsiella and E. coli both are gram negative, but Klebsiella gives positive test for urease, whereas E. coli gives negative test. Then we have the citrate test and don't say citrate negative test, just say it is not utilized. So citrate is not utilized, thus it is green. If it has been utilized, it would have turned from green to blue and then we can say it is utilized. So don't say citrate negative, say citrate unutilized. The next one is a yellow one which you should ignore because it has not turned its color. So the pink one is what I am talking about, it's TSI test and uh, it is basically what's the name uh, triple sugar iron test yeah so triple sugar iron test and see it is not very clearly visible but you will find some gas produced in it and next to it is another pink one and this does not have a gas in it if it is not very clearly visible please go and check out on your lab and there will be no gas present in it so e coli is a lactose fermenter so of course it will give tsi positive E. coli is a acidic bacteria right the pH will also increase and that pH will create the gas that is the answer like this is a common sense and this is the answer if anybody ask that why one has a gas and the other doesn't so this is the oxidase test and the paper is blotting paper it soaks the reagent that has been given and then with the help of a stick you will take the unknown growth and which is actually pseudomonas you know that it's not unknown to you and within 10 to 30 seconds if the paper turns blue it is a positive test for pseudomonas originosa this is coagulase test and after cleaning the slide one drop of normal saline is taken on the slide and then with the help of a stick or a slide side the growth that is present on the medium we take that and this is how we should take the growth as it has been shown like don't take the whole medium culture medium just take the growth and then with the help of it within the saline just mix it to give it a milky white appearance and you can see there is no clumping actually so as we can see there is no clumping then we will proceed to give one drop of plasma and then we will see that the clumping has already started and thus it is a coagulase positive test for staphylococcus aureus and see the plasma is taken right now and after taking the plasma it started clumping and thus it is a positive test for staphylococcus aureus this is a catalyst test where one drop of H2O2 has been taken and the first important step is to identify which gram positive is it. Is it a strepto or is it a staphylo? So catalyst is positive for staphylococcus aureus and the bubble shows that it is positive. If it was negative, it would be streptococcus. stories about it like in our internals we had broken microscopes can you imagine we had that and we have to face that and the most horrible part is the microscopes will not get changed you know 
we are very lucky as a medical student right like no don't think like we are the most un like unluckiest students because even if the slides like the preparation is wrong or if the microscope my, in my internal my microscope was broken the slide but i had to fix it it was broken it was just moving like this and i just couldn't focus it but my teacher said it's all right if it's the microscope fault you will get marks i don't know whether it's true or not but it is a very horrible thing for a student who is like literally shivering with all those pressure of the subjects and then she finds out that her microscope is not working but in case of pathology it it was just changed my like after seeing my friends microscope the teacher came to me and like wow this is great that this the staining has been great like my, in my microscope in pathology the wbcs and uh, the neutrophils like were clearly visible i swear and and it just happened like i moved the microscope and it was there after preparing the zn staining i will talk about pathology later but it happened to me and the ma'am was very happy like oh, this is really nice but it is not in my hand like of course it is my in my hand but even it's it is also the responsible of the microscope right if the microscope is broken what can we do and my other batsmen they faced the problem in pathology their microscopes were broken they were not working but it was an instruction that they had to do it the way it is this is it for microbiology and the practical it consists of a lot of things i hope that this video has helped you like my exams are growing i'm really in stress and it's uh, winter here in kolkata and uh, i hope that this video helps i will be making videos on pathology and pharmacology and dental material prostho and cons which are the subjects in second year so that you guys can get some help and i will see you guys in the next video until then take care bye bye